Drew back here with you on YouTube. Welcome back to another Z Code System video, and I'm glad to be here to talk to you about the upcoming English Premier League season, which is going to kick off on August the 13th. I can't wait for it, and I'm sure you can't either. It's been a great summer of football with the Euros and the Olympics, and now we are ready for the club seasons to kick off. We've already seen it kicking off in various leagues uh, in Europe already. And as you can see there, we put some picks up for the Scottish Premiership, their first day, their first match day. Uh, last weekend, we put those up, or I put those up for you to watch. And now we are going to give you the preview for the upcoming Premier League season. Now, one of the things that I want to do this season here on YouTube and on Z Code System is what we did with the Scottish Premiership uh, last week, as you can see. Uh, rather than writing out a full blog for you to read, we just simply put a video up here on YouTube for you to get all of the tidbits and picks. Uh, and we're going to be doing those what I call quick hits more often this season. And we're going to be having those for um, various leagues throughout the year, uh, as well as uh, bringing to you the full previews for the weekend and picks for leagues such as the Premier League, uh, as well as the Champions League, uh, when that kicks off uh, proper uh, with the group stage in September. So uh, we're going to be coming to you with those great picks all season long. So you're going to want to sign up to Z Code System because, of course, you can get picks here on YouTube or on the blog. But you're going to want to use those tools that we offer for soccer or for any of the other sports that you might want to bet on throughout the year. Now, we're going to be bringing you this preview as we discuss a few things, and uh, I'm excited about it, and I'm sure you are too. So let's get in on the preview. Okay, so here's the preview that is up at Z Code System. You can go over there and read all up on it. Like I said, it's going to start the league that is on August the 13th, and a lot of great things are happening. Uh, that first game is going to be between Brentford, newly promoted, uh, taking on Arsenal, and that is going to come from the Brentford Community Stadium there on Friday the 13th. Ooh, Friday the 13th. Wow. Uh, it could be a very haunting day for one of those two teams. Now, we're going to take a look at some betting odds for teams to win outright the Premier League, as well as teams to be relegated this season. But we're also going to be obviously chatting about uh, these different teams and things maybe to look out for this coming season. Now, last season, Manchester City won the title and they just uh, won it in front of Manchester United uh, in the Premier League and they are tipped as the favorites going into this season and why wouldn't they? They were brilliant last season at defeating all that came before them. Uh, they started slowly but picked it up as we got to Christmas and Liverpool fell off the pace for the league title uh, after they started you know, decently uh, but they uh, capitulated really in January before picking things up to uh, make the Champions League at the end of the season. Now as I say Manchester City are the favorites going into the season. Now, at the moment, as it stands, they've really not added to the squad uh, going into the season. Now, one man who is not going to be there is this man right there, uh, Sergio Aguero. He has left the club. He's joined Barcelona. He won't be back. But Manchester City are working on some transfers right now. They could sign Jack Grealish from Aston Villa for around 100 million pounds. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if that would really make them so much better with all of the creative players they already have, uh, but they are also in the market to sign Harry Kane from Tottenham Hotspur, who as of today has skipped two straight days of training with, uh, with Tottenham Hotspur as he tries to force through a move. If they got Harry Kane, I cannot see Manchester City failing to win the Premier League. And to be honest, I would think that they could win the Champions League as well. Now, if you remember back uh, last season, Manchester City did lose the Champions League final, losing to Chelsea in that final game. Now, let's take a look at those odds for Manchester City as well as the other teams in the Premier League. Now, of course, I'm using my favorite sports book here, Bet365. There are other sports books out there, so pick the one that you love the most. But I am going to uh, use this one uh, here, Bet365, to showcase to you the odds for the upcoming season to win the league. And as you can see there, the book closes on 14th of August at 12.30 uh, for this year's outright bets for the Premier League. Now, I am prepared to make my wager. Unfortunately, when it comes to this, uh, I do like to wager on my favorite team. That is Liverpool, of course. Oh, there it is right there. Uh, Liverpool. Um, mostly just I do that out of being a fan. 
rather than to try to make any money uh, off of the team winning the league. Um, but, uh, you know, that usually is a uh, recipe for disaster if you're wagering large amounts of money on your favorite team from year to year. Uh, now, Manchester City, as you can see there, they are favorites to win the Premier League at minus 150. As I said, so far, they've not really added to the squad, uh, but they are hoping to get Harry Kane in before September and Jack Grealish, possibly. Uh, the Grealish move looks a lot more likely as Tottenham Hotspur tend to be a bit hard-nosed and stubborn about transferring players. Uh, but like I said, Harry Kane officially has missed two straight days of training with Tottenham Hotspur to try to force through this move. Chelsea and Liverpool are coming in at second favorites right now, plus 500 odds. Chelsea not really done anything in the transfer market right now, not really built on that squad. But the big signing that they made was actually last I guess it was January when they signed Thomas Tuchel, their current manager. He ended up leading the team to the Champions League final and winning that and also to the FA Cup final where they lost to Leicester City. Uh, this is a, a good team that can get better. Uh, they signed last summer big money transfers of Kai Havertz, who scored in the Champions League final, as well as Timo Werner. Neither player really um, succeeded at the level that would have been hoped for. Uh, but this year it will be uh, aimed that these two players can kick on and do even more for Chelsea. They, they have some dis um, some issues in defense and they really need to kind of mold uh, or sign, I should say, uh, maybe some central defenders uh, going into this season. Now, Liverpool, speaking of central defenders, they have gotten back Virgil van Dijk, Joe Gomez and Ibrahim, or excuse me, Joe Gomez, Joel Matip and Virgil van Dijk for this season. All three of those players missed about three quarters of the season last year due to injuries. Uh, Van Dyke, in particular, was out for 285 days with a torn ACL. Missing those players really hurt Liverpool, especially Van Dyke, who is one of their leaders. And uh, Van Dyke, uh, recently listening to uh, various podcasts getting ready for the season, Van Dyke has been um, considered a player who is one that Liverpool signed that. Uh, is probably one of the best signings in all of football over the last 20 years because of the way that he changed Liverpool and improved that team after joining from Southampton. Uh, I really have to agree with that. And I think having all three of those defenders back, plus new signing central defender uh, Ibrahim Kanate, that is going to help Liverpool very much. And I think this team is going to be so much better in defense. We saw them at times last year giving up goals like crazy uh, to Manchester City at one point. Uh, to to Aston Villa at one point who put seven past Liverpool in the early part of the season. I think that uh, this is going to be uh, a Liverpool that uh, is much better than last year and one that um, will be much more rejuvenated after winning the title in 2019-20. Um, they do need to do a few things to the rest of the team. Liverpool could really use a new attacking player to help uh, to help out Sadio Mane and to help out Mohamed Salah. But right now, this is a team that I think is is good enough to fight for the title. Uh, but it could be even better and uh, possibly win the title if they were able to add to that forward line. And to be honest, Liverpool really need to get rid of a few players such as Divac Origi, uh, Zerdin Shakiri. Those players have, have basically overstayed their welcome, and uh, Liverpool really need to cash in on those players. Now, speaking of new players uh, in new places, Manchester United have signed Jadon Sancho and Rafael Varane. So Sancho arrives from Borussia Dortmund with big expectations, while Rafael Varane was a solid defender with Real Madrid, and he joins Manchester United to upgrade that really good defense from last season. Now, Manchester United finished second in the league and lost in the Europa League final to Villarreal on penalties. I picked that. Um, and so we go into this season. Now, they were going to be missing Marcus Rashford for the first month, two months of the season due to shoulder, uh, excuse me, due to a shoulder operation that he will undergo. Um, despite these signings, I don't think they necessarily make United overall that much better. I think the defense will be good, um, but it was good last year already. Um, they had question marks in goal. I think Dean Henderson should be the starting goalkeeper. And he's shown that he is uh, much more dialed in right now than David De Gea, who they desperately should sell to uh, get some money back uh, and get him off the wage bill. Um, but in my opinion, United are a team or a club who they don't necessarily have an identity and they are, they continue to sign players without 
this identity or this direction. Um, they've pin, spent big money to get both Sancho and to get Varane. And again, I think they'll play very well, finishing the top four, but I think they're going to miss out on the title this season. Spurs, interesting team because they're possibly going to lose Harry Kane if he can force move that uh, force that move through. And they have also uh, signed new coach Nuno Espirito Santo, who I think is a brilliant coach, but was never their first choice. Uh, he comes from Wolverhampton Wanderers, where he probably, probably overachieved uh, in each of his three seasons, four seasons there. I think it was three seasons. And so uh, Spurs go into this season um, with a lot of question marks around them as well, uh, as do Arsenal, who uh, I think are going to be finishing outside the top four this year. I don't think they're going to be that great uh, of a team. And I think Mikel Arteta, as I wrote in the blog, could be the first manager sacked this year uh, when we kick off. Uh, Arsenal stated last year that he would be given the first couple of games of this year and they would reassess. Uh, Leicester City coming in there at plus 5,000, a team I don't think are going to trouble uh, first place in the league uh, and a team that will be focused on possibly going deep into the Europa League this season. Now, we see a huge difference there. Man City already picked their, like I say, by the sports books to win the league at minus 150, and it really tails off uh, from there with the teams that the sports books, leading sports books, including Bet365 believe will win the league. Now, let's take a quick look at teams that are possibly likely to be relegated. This is one of the great things, though, about the Premier League. You get all of these great markets, uh, preseason markets. I love these outright bets. Um, if you followed along with the Euros and you followed my picks from the beginning, I had picked Italy to win the Euro tournament, uh, the Euro championships. So if you got behind that, you would have won some money. Um, I've also, uh, I've not advertised it here on the on the vlog but uh, I did pick Spain's Olympic men's team to win the Olympic gold and so far so good uh, they are into the final as of today now as we see with the relegation we see that Norwich City are favorites at minus 120 to go back down they won the championship last season were very good uh, Daniel Fark's team uh, is a, a solid side um, but defensive issues have troubled them uh, previously when they were in the Premier League in 2019-20 and they were relegated. Watford and uh, Brentford both came up from the championship this past season. Uh, and of, of those three teams, I really like Brentford to stay up. I love what they do as a football club and business, if you want to call it that. Uh, the way that they sign players, scout players and sell players um, is brilliant. Uh, and I think, um, at least I, I, I would think in my mind that they are going to stay up the season. And I wouldn't be surprised if Norwich stay up. Now, Watford are a team that could go back down. This is a club that's not afraid to sack a manager after a couple of poor results. Uh, Isco Munez is the favorite to be sacked first off this season as coach. You can read about that on the blog as I put the odds there. Uh, Crystal Palace, they've changed managers this year. Patrick Vieira, former Arsenal player, uh, he is in charge of the team. They, I want to say... They released 12 players last season who were out of contract and also let go coach Roy Hodgson and his backroom staff. Uh, this is a club that is trying to change its identity and uh, attempting to make a lot of changes uh, coming into this season. Now, we saw them try to do this a few years ago when they hired Frank DeBoer as coach. Uh, they, they basically blew that up, that experiment up within the first month or so of the Premier League season and brought in Hodgson and went with a very um, defensive, I guess you could say, style. Uh, they don't score a lot of goals, or at least they didn't previously, uh, but Vieira is there to try to change things. And if they start off poorly, if they have some poor results, it will be interesting to see if Crystal Palace decide to stay the course or to change course once more. Um, but I like Crystal Palace to stay up this season. Uh, I can't say the same about Burnley, but the problem is I say this every season, Burnley – they're, they're not fun to watch. Uh, I, I, I don't care for um, Coach Sean Dyche's tactics, um, but he does well with what he has. He has very little. Um, they're a very low-budget team. There's not a lot of money there, and they don't sign a lot of very good players, but they all work hard, uh, and they continue to stay up. I expect them to fight relegation, and on a personal level, I wouldn't mind seeing them go down Um this season now Newcastle. This is this is a team that is just an enigma. Uh, with Steve Bruce there as manager, it looks like he's going to stay regardless of, of really what happens. 
Um, they, they've stayed with him. Uh, Mike Ashley, the owner, wants to sell the team, but uh, that seems to be blocked at the moment and uh, you know issues there with selling uh, the Magpies. I could see this team going down, even though there are some very good players in the squad. Um, there were times last year when they were a very good team and times when they were a very ugly team. Um, so I, I can definitely see Newcastle going down. Now, if I'm going to pick a dark horse to be relegated this season or, or to finish in that bottom three, and, and to finish in that bottom three, I should say, uh, I'm going to pick Brighton. Uh, Graham Potter, he's kept them up in the Premier League the last couple of years. But this is a team that, uh, in my opinion, are not high on talent. Uh, they don't look that great. Uh, I think they uh, are a bit deceiving when, when you watch them. I know there's a lot of praise over uh, the way that Graham Potter has them play every week and every every season. But I just don't like this team. I don't think they're as, as good as uh, perhaps the media makes them out to be. Um, yes, they might play a little bit of attractive football every once in a while, but I think that this is a team that could be relegated this season. Um, since Potter's taken over, they've not necessarily uh, cracked on like uh, was hoped, and they continue to to finish down near the bottom of the table, and um, the results are not that great. Um, so I'm picking Brighton to be a bit of a surprise team to be relegated this season. Now, to finish off our video today here on Z Code System, be sure to go over to the blog because I've written so much more than what we've covered here on the blog. So you can go there and you can read up on that. Uh, so I'm going to give you my picks for this season. I'm going to give you my picks for the Premier League winner, the top four, as well as to be relegated. Now, uh, to be relegated uh, this season, let's start with that. Uh, I'm going to pick Watford. I think Watford will go back down. I think that um, even though there are some good players there, I think that uh, if Watford start to drop points and to lose games, we're going to see this team sack, sack Isco Munez and uh, bring somebody else in. And again, if, if those results don't go their way, they're going to sack managers, uh, you know, continue to sack managers. It's happened before and it happened during the season. They were relegated in 1920, uh, 2019, 2020, I should say. Um, I think we could also see Brighton go down, uh, even though, like I said, that uh, there's always a lot of praise for Graham Potter's team and the way that they play football. I just don't think this team scores enough goals, and there's not really any players that stand out to me. They sold um, Ben White, uh, defender, in the summer here to Arsenal, and so far, uh, I believe, last time I checked, they have not brought anybody in, even though they wanted to sign Liverpool's um uh, Nat Phillips, they want to sign him, uh, but right now no deal is in place. So I'm picking Brighton and Watford to go down, and my third team to go down, I'm going to have to say, even though I don't want them to go down, I'm going to have to say Norwich. Uh, I, I really like Norwich. I like how they play, and I like the fact that they've always stuck with Daniel Fark, even though uh, the results haven't gone their way. They stuck with him throughout that 2019-2020 season when Norwich were relegated. Uh, they stuck with him because they know that he's a good coach and that he does well at the championship level. So why change things? Um, unfortunately, I'm going to pick them to go down this season. The Canaries, Watford, as well as Brighton. Um, but I love Brentford to stay up because I like the way that they do things. And I think that they're going to be a good team this year in the Premier League, just like Leeds were last year. Now, my picks for, let's take a look at uh, to win the league. It's hard to go against... Manchester City uh, to win the league because they are such a good team. And if they get Harry Kane, I think that there's no way you can stop them. I think that they will win the league uh, with Harry Kane in the side and Harry Kane winning the golden boot. But that is if they get Harry Kane. Now, if they don't get Kane, and even if they get Jack Grealish, I think they're going to have trouble retaining the title uh, with playing in the Champions League, the EFL Cup, as well as the FA Cup. And I think Chelsea and Liverpool will run them very close, while Manchester United will take points off of these teams as well. The top teams, I think, are going to be able to take points off of each other, those top four. And I think Tottenham are going to be better, even if they lose Kane. I think they're going to be better than people think, because I think uh, Nuno Espirito Santo is a fantastic manager. Uh, I think that, that Spurs can really trouble those teams. Uh, Leicester City, again, they should be able to trouble those teams. Everton, I think, are going to have a fallback this year after losing Carlo Ancelotti as manager. Uh, Leeds are going to be just as good again this season. Um, and I'm going to go against... Manchester City winning this. Call it home. Call it. Call me a, a homer. Um, but I'm going to pick Liverpool to win the title and to come back and win win it this year. 
Um, they've been able to rest a lot of their megastars this summer. They've got players coming back from injury. And if they can make one more signing in attack, this is a team that can, can do great things in all competitions. Uh, and I'm going to pick them. I know, I know what you're going to say. I know what you're going to say. But I'm going to pick them to win the title this year over Manchester City, even though, you know, City are a great team under Pep Guardiola. Now, picking my top four, this isn't too difficult because, and you know, here's the top four for you, the odds from Bet365 right there. And I can't go against that top four. City, Liverpool, Chelsea, Manchester United. It, it's hard to pick teams, uh, other teams, to crack that top four. I just don't think anybody else is. I think it's going to be those big four um, winning this season and, and qualifying for the Champions League. Uh, Spurs, interesting thing, they'll be playing in the Europa Conference League, which is the new third uh, continental competition from UEFA. I'm actually excited about this tournament uh, because it's giving the, I'm going to air quotes, lesser teams uh, the chance to play in a continental tournament and possibly win silverware. Now, Spurs have a great chance of winning this uh, tournament. Um, and it's going to be a lot of fun to watch because it's going to be quite unpredictable uh, with some of the teams that are in it. Um, but of course, uh, there's going to be a long season for Spurs with that competition and the other competitions they'll be in with the FA Cup, the uh, EFL Cup, and of course the Premier League. So I think that will help take away from Spurs finishing in the top four. Arsenal, I just don't think are good enough in the top four. And I think Mikel Arteta has shown that he's an inconsistent manager. Leicester City, They've shown over the last couple of years that they can fight for a top four place until it comes down to zero hour when it really matters and they capitulate. Um, so, guys, those are my picks for the Premier League winner, the teams to be relegated, and the teams to finish in the top four. Now, I'm going to come back to you later this week with another vlog uh, on the championship, the championship preview. I'm going to bring that to you as we get ready for the championship season. Championship season kicks off this weekend, which is very great, uh, very good for all of us sports bettors and all of us soccer fans. The championship is one of the most competitive leagues in all of Europe. And to be honest, it is one of those leagues that is very difficult to pick. And what I'm probably going to do is just bring you a quick hit preview vlog rather than give you the blog uh, as well, as I told you earlier, I'm going to be doing these quick hits this year with just videos on YouTube uh, to get you excited about betting on football all season long. So we're going to bring that to you later this week. So guys, thanks for watching here on YouTube. Be sure to smash that like button, comment below, and subscribe to the channel. And stay up to date on everything we do here at Z Code System. And of course, go over to Z Code System, sign up today to be a member of the Z Code System family. And you can get the great picks and use the tools all season long for whatever sport that you wager on, whether it be the Premier League, La Liga, Bundesliga, or any of the other great sports around the world, including Major League Baseball, which the playoffs are coming up soon, the NBA, which will be back soon for the next season, the NHL, and of course, the big one, the NFL coming up soon with the season kicking off in September. So guys, we will see you soon here on Z Code System. Don't forget to like and subscribe and later.